So how is everyone today? <laughs> okay, so last time when we ended, we were, we had been talking about sorting. So let's continue that discussion. <clears throat> So, uh, specifically, last time, <coughs> we had started with, with a list of elements that was uh, out of order, and we had started to try and sort it. So, uh, let, let's look at that one more time. So, how about uh, three, <coughs> one, uh, four, two. Okay, so a sh uh, much shorter list than last time. So, how did we go about trying to sort this list. Right, compare uh, just any two numbers or the first two, right? So in particular what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, numbers that are side by side in this in this list. So we could com we'll first compare these and then the question that we ask ourselves is that uh, is this pair in the right order? And the answer is no, they're not in the right order because uh, what we said last time is we want the result to be a list which is in ascending order, smallest first. So we'll swap those two, one, three, four, two. So we swapped one and three. Now we'll check these two and ask, are these two in the right order? Okay, they are in the right order, so then we'll say, okay, we'll leave those. So those did, did not move. And then we'll compare these two and ask, are these in the correct order? And the answer is, no, they're not in the correct order, so we'll swap them. So we have one, three, two, four. <coughs> so, so what I want you to observe is kind of this staircase looking thing. And the resulting list uh, is not, is not sorted into order, but it's more, it's more nearly sorted into order. Okay, so then how can we finish the process? Yeah, by, by starting over. Okay, so we can ask, are these in order? So, so these are in order, so they need not be swapped. So those stay. And then, are these in order? They're not. <coughs> So we'll swap them, one, two, three, four. And remember, in this class, what we're doing is we're trying to, we're trying to uh, tell MATLAB how to do these things. Now, this problem is small enough, and humans are clever, eno clever enough that at this position, you can, tell, you can tell me what. So at this position, the list is now sorted. Okay? But that's just because you're a human and you can see the whole list etc. But Mat MATLAB doesn't have any concept about it. Did you have a question? Yes. Um, why did we need to ask ourselves again about the one and three? Uh, neither of them changed and we asked it. Uh, well, uh, so from, from a human point of view, I agree <laughs> entirely in a sense that we, uh, that you can see that we, we wouldn't have to. But no, the reason why we're going to continue doing that anyway for, from, from MATLAB's point of view is that, well, otherwise you would have had to remember that. And how would you, how would you convince MATLAB to remember that? Store it, Sto store it somewhere? Okay, I mean, I agree that this is, not a, this is not an excellent way to sort these items, and we're going to talk about multiple ways. So I'll just have to say that I agree that this is kind of Kind of, kind of dumb, kind of a dumb way to do this, but it, but it's working, it's working. So what I want you to observe is that, is that at this position, at this position, the list is sorted, but MATLAB doesn't know it. Okay, so now we'll have to check. Uh, how about three and four? Are these in the right order? Okay. <clears throat> so now one, two, three. So what I want you to see from here is that so far there's been two, two staircases. Here is uh, here is we uh, one full staircase. <coughs> okay, and then here is another full staircase. 
And the list is in sorted order, but MATLAB doesn't know it yet. So, <clears throat> how can we tell? How can, how, how can, what is a, uh, the, the simplest possible way to tell MATLAB for, for you to conf confirm that the uh, list is in sorted order? Go through the whole staircase again and count up the number of switches. So if you, if you have to make no swaps, if you didn't have to make any, then the list is sorted. So let's see. <clears throat> Did this one result in a swap? Yes. yes. Did this one result in a swap? No. no. Did this one result in a swap? No. Yes. So as a result of when we were making this staircase, because there, was, there were two swaps, we, we're not sure that the list is in sorted order yet. Similarly, did this one result in a swap? No. no. Did this one? Yes. yes. Did this one result in a swap? No. So, so this second building the second staircase, we had to make a swap. So, so for, for, from this simple-minded point of view, maybe the list is not sorted. So let's build the staircase one more time and ask, well, are one, two in the right order? They are. Are two, three in the right order? They are. Are three, four in the right order? They are. So we made one last staircase. And how many swaps did we make constructing this staircase? None. So therefore, therefore we, can, we can conclude, ah, the list is, is in sorted order at this time. Okay, so then, now I agree entirely that we did a lot of work multiple times and that this is not even close to being the best way to sort uh, items. But can you agree that this is, this is a way to sort items? Okay, so this, this method that we're doing where you essentially construct a staircase as many times as necessary, swapping sequential items until you can construct a staircase and no, no sequential swaps are necessary, the name for this is bubble sort. Now, that being said, there's a whole sort of family of sorts which are called bubble sorts, and this is just one particular instance of it. So, uh, you know, the staircase could be going the other way. Uh, you could be doing some other interesting things, like here's a nice observation about bubble sort, and that is that when you, when you make a staircase, when you make a full staircase, uh, and if you do it the way that we're doing, you proceed left to right, then it will be the case that after, after the staircase has been, has been completely made, at the end of that time, the largest element will have made it all the way to the right. Okay, it will have made it all the way to the right uh, because, um, well, if this was the four, then, then we would have swapped it and it would have been in the second position. And then we would have compared and made another comparison and then swapped it into the third position and then made a last comparison and swapped it into the last position. So one way to make this just slightly better is to say that, well, at the end of the staircase, you don't, you don't have to go all the way to the end anymore because the last element is surely the biggest one. Okay, and that kind of addresses your concern because you said something like, we already knew that one and three were in the right order. Good. Any question about this one? Okay, let's see another sort. <clears throat> okay, so let's sort mm, slightly bigger list, maybe with six elements. So how about uh, three, <clears throat> one, six, two, what do I have left? Uh, five, four. Okay. So now, <clears throat> what we're going to do <coughs> is uh, we're going to uh, maintain uh, an invariant. 
So this is an aside over here. So I'd like for you to consider uh, the empty list, so the list which contains no elements. Is that list sorted? Yes. Yes. <laughs> because what would it mean, what would it mean, what, what does it mean for a list to be not sorted? That there's a pair of elements in the wrong order. Okay, so, so, so any, any pair is in the wrong order. That's what it means for, for a list to be unsorted. So how many pairs are there in the empty list? Zero. No pairs. Therefore, none of them are out of order. So the empty list is sorted already because no pairs are out of order. Okay, are any other kind of trivial, so in, in a sense, the empty list is sort of like a trivial list uh, that, that, that is automatically sorted. Are there any other lists that are also trivial in this sense and therefore automatically already sorted? Yeah, any list that contains just one item in it. Okay, so why is any list that contains just one item also automatically sorted? Because there's, there's still no pairs, right? To make a pair, that means that you select one item and some other one. So how many pairs are there in a list of just one item? No pairs. So therefore, n none of them are out of order. So this is, this is again, a definitional thing. And th it's exactly the same as saying something like, uh, are you aware that UTD uh, is undefeated in football? <laughs> Uh, is that a true statement? Yes. It is true. Why is that true? B because, because you consider the set of games that we've played, is it, is it true that for every game in the set of football games that, UT, that UTD has played, that it's been a win? That's true. Because if you were to say that it's false, I would say, please show me the game that we lost. But that's, that's, so, but that's besides the point. It, it, it really is besides the point. Well, I guess for, for the analogy, I'm just, I'm kind of confused because you could just, like, reverse your reason. There. Well, he, here's, let me, let me unseat your confusion then. It is true that UTD's football team is undefeated. That's true. It is also true that we've lost every game mm -hmm. that we've played mm -hmm. uh, because, because if you were to say, no, that's not true, then I'd say, well, please produce for me the game that we've won. And because you'd be unable to produce a game that we've won, then my statement would be true. So this, this, is, part of, this, is, a, this is a place where, where uh, all, all undergraduate students kind of are just a little bit uncomfortable until you can accept this kind of position, I promise you I'm not, I'm not joking or, de or deceiving you, is that you take a set, an empty set, every predicate upon the elements of the empty set is true. So it is, it is true to say that considering the set of all football games that UTD has played, we have won all of them. That predicate is true. It is also true to say that we've lost all of those games. It's also true to say that at the halftime of every single one of those games, Tamak was dressed in purple and riding a giraffe. This is just, a, the, all of these statements are true because, because Tamak is our mascot in case you didn't know. <laughs> Tamak is Comet spelled backwards. Uh, if you were to say, no, 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 that's not, it's not true that Tamak was dressed in purple and riding a giraffe, <coughs> then I'd say, oh, well, would you please show me the game where that wasn't, where, where that didn't happen? You would be unable to do that. And so I'd have to, so then I would conclude, no, in fact, it is true that for every game. <laughs> okay. So the empty list is sorted. And lists uh, with one element are also sorted. 
for the same reason. Because they have no pairs that could possibly be out of order. Okay, <clears throat> so what, what this sort is going to do is we're going to make uh, a dividing line. And everything to the left of the dividing line is going to be uh, is going to be a list, a sublist, which is sorted. So in the in the first place. So this is this is this is the the list that's passed in. So now I'm just going to write it down one more time. Three one six two five four. And now I want you to consider the list that is to the left, to the left of my dividing line to the left. So is the list that is to the left of my dividing line sorted at this time? Mm -hmm. It is sorted. It's sorted because the list of elements that is to my left is the empty list. And the empty list is sorted. So because that's sorted, <coughs> now I'm going to move the dividing line one position to the right. And now I have a question. Is everything to the left of my dividing line sorted? Yes. So what I want you to see is that what the dividing line does is it takes the list and breaks it into two sublists. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to make sure that the, that, the, that the list that's on the left is always sorted, and this one on the right is going to be whatever, however it is. So this side is sorted. This side is not sorted. OK? So now, <clears throat> this is sorted. Three, one, six, two, five, four. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the dividing line one position to the right and then, and then ask, is the list sorted? It's not. But <clears throat> everything that was to the left of the previous uh, that was to the left of the previous <coughs> position is sorted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this element and I'm going to push it as far to the left as need be into its right into its uh, into the correct position. So uh, in particular, I'm going to ask. So are those two in order? They're not. So I'll swap them <coughs> to get one three. Six, two, five, four. And what I want you to observe now is that now everything, the list that is to the left of the dividing line is now a sorted list. Okay, but every, the, the list that's to the right, um, <coughs> it, it's, it's whatever it is. It's not sorted. So now we're going to push the, d the divider to the right. <coughs> so I push the divider to the right. And now I'm going to ask, is, now that I've pushed the divider one position to the right, is, is, is just this one in the right position? I don't need to worry about the others. Why do I not need to worry about the others? Because they're already sorted. So the question is now, is this list sorted? It is. OK, good. So that means that I can, I can just progress. One, three, six. Two, five, four. So I push the divider to here and then ask, okay, with this division is the list, is the, the left list sorted? It is not. And the only one that I really need to be worried about, the only one that I really need to be worried about is this one. Because none of these three, uh, in a sense, ignoring the new one, all of these are in the right order. So all that I need to do, really, is I need to take this 2 and push it as far to the left as it needs to go. OK. So the way that we'll do that is, again, with sequential comparisons. So I'll ask, well, are these in order? They're not. So I'll swap them and get 1, 3, 2, 6. The divider is still here. Okay. Are are these in order? 
They're not, so I'll swap them. And then, are these in order? The answer is yes, they are in order. So now we have moving the moving the divider one position to the right that that violates the sortedness condition but it can only violate it for just this one for the one element that was right there so we're just in a sense just pushing that one as far to the left as it needs to go and now that we did now that we pushed two to the left now the 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 sortedness of the left list is maintained so now what move the divider one more to the right Okay, now, because we moved the divider one to the right, we have possibly violated the sortedness of the left list. So how do we, how do we check if we have violated the sortedness of the left list? Right, so we don't need to check over here. We don't need to check over here because these, the violation, if any occurred, wouldn't have occurred over here. It could only have occurred here. Okay. <coughs> So we'll check. Are these in the right order? They're not, so we'll swap them. One, two, three, five, six, four. Okay, so now we'll check the next sequential pair. So this sequential pair. So are those in the right order? They are. Do you observe that we don't need to go any further to the left anymore? We don't need to go any further to the left because we know that the rest of the, the list further to the left is sorted. Okay. So, that means that what is it time to do? Push the divider one more position to the right. And then, and then ask, okay, <coughs> is this list in sorted order? It is not, uh, but so moving the divider one position to the right, we might have violated the sortedness condition of the left list. So where's the first place we need to check if we violated that condition? The rightmost pair. So we'll ask, okay, is the rightmost <coughs> pair in order? It is not. So that means we need to swap them. So one, two, three, five, four, six. And the divider is still here. Now what? Check the next pair, moving to the left. Okay, so then are these, is this pair in the right order? No. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Divider is still here. Now, as a human being, and because this list is small enough, you can look at it, and at this time, you, you can determine that the list is in the right order. But MATLAB can't, right? You need to do one more thing. What do you need to check? Check this pair. So is that pair in order? It is. Therefore, we need to do nothing else. Uh, we, we don't need to do any further checks. To the, going to the left because uh, everything to the left is already by, by precondition, by hypothesis, sorted. And then so I can say, well, since I don't need to move four any further to the left, that means the next thing to do would be to move the divider to the right. But there's no more, we don't need to go any further to the right uh, because we've run out of elements. So now this list is sorted. Okay. So any question about this style of sorting? So it starts out by, by you say, okay, everything to the left of the red line is sorted. <laughs> of course it is, because there's nothing to the left. Then, okay, now everything to the left is sorted. And then of course it is, 
because there's just one thing over there. Then you move then you move the divider one thing to the right. Now we might have violated the sortedness condition. One check gets it right for us. Good. And then just continue. So this process, even if the list was had millions of elements, in principle you could, with great patience, <laughs> move move the divider one position to the right at every time. So does anyone know the name of this sorting procedure? Yes? Insertion sort. This is called insertion sort. It's called insertion because what happens is, is that after you get past the trivial lists, so the, the, the empty list and the list that contains one element, those are trivial. Once you get past that one, what you're doing is you're trying to figure out where does this new element belong in the previously sorted list. So one had to move to the left, one position. Okay, then six, it was, just by coincidence, it was already in the correct position. Okay, then when we got here, notice that two needed to be moved uh, to that position. So to achieve that, we first swapped two and six, then we swapped two and three, and then it was in the right position. Okay, <clears throat> then how about we get to say this one. Four, where did four need, need to be? Between three and five, right? So in a sense, five and six needed to move over, and four needed to take five's place. To achieve that, we first permuted, we first transposed these, then these, and then we noticed that these were in the right order. So four is inserted into the correct position. So this sort is called insertion sort. So believe it or not, uh, for small lists, lists that are uh, the definition of small is a little, a little hazy. Uh, but suffice it to say, if your list is pretty small and you ask your uh, computer to perform a sort, this is what it does for small lists. <coughs> okay. Any question about insertion sort? Okay. <coughs> so now, uh, the bad news or just news anyway, is that if you were to attempt to, to say, go to the library, and if you could construct a very large bookshelf <laughs> that where you could put all of the books in, uh, just, just side by side, and if you were to set yourself to the task of, well, I'm just going to sort them all alphabetically, just right in a line, then insertion sort would take you 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 would you honestly you'd probably die before you finished if you were to try to <laughs> if you were to try and do it with insertion sort it just you, you you could never do enough work to get to the end so that that's a little disconcerting okay but but uh, you could if you knew how to do it you could actually sort them all in a reasonable amount of time and by reasonable I mean before you die Okay, even though there's lots and lots and lots of books uh, in that, on that bookshelf. <coughs> okay, so here's the way, <coughs> here's the way uh, that we'll do it. One way. So let's take a list, and it'll be uh, a relatively uh, large list, because this takes less steps. How about one? No, I don't want to start with one. I want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I was about to write down a list of numbers in order. <laughs> that would that, that wouldn't be so great. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> so how about uh, <clears throat> five, six, uh, four? Three, one, three, nine, eight, two, seven. Yeah, there's duplicates, but it, it doesn't matter. <coughs> How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, that's probably enough. <coughs> okay. So this is what we're we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have to break this problem into pieces. We'll say, okay, 
you can kind of imagine that. What if, what if you had two people, and you wanted to sort these this this list of books? Okay, then you'd want to somehow say, okay, you you do your work, and um, and I'll do I'll do my work, and then somehow we'll we'll combine our results to to make it end up to, so that we can get the final result. Okay. So at the present time, there are there are ten. Uh, ten elements in this list, but what I what I'd like for you to see is that if you had two people, if you had two people, then you could say, well, first I want I want uh, I'm going to sort the first half, and you sort the second half. So we'll make a divider here and say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna break the problem into two problems. I'll sort the list on the left. You sort the list on the right. Okay, <clears throat> so two problems now. Five, six, four, three, one, three, nine, eight, two, seven. So conceptually, I'd like for you to think of them as two different lists. But now let's imagine that you have two more people. What else, what, so ig ignore this over here. Or even you could say, uh, and we'll, you could still say just for these two people, we're going to ignore the list on the right and just focus on my problem. So then you could say, okay, well, let's break this list into two lists. And let's break it as nearly evenly as possible. We can't break it exactly evenly. Why can we not break it exact? Well, because you, you can't evenly divide five things into, into two exactly same size groups. So we'll break it into two groups and we'll make the left list the slightly smaller list. So that is to say, that we'll say that the list on the left has, uh, is the one with two elements. Okay. <clears throat> so now this list is now two sublists. So we have five and six and then this other list, four, three, and one. And now I want you to uh, ignore the list on the right. <laughs> and we'll just focus on the list on the left. Uh, so there's, there's, so is this list a trivial list? Which lists are the trivial ones? The, the empty list and the list with one element. And why are, where, sorting, where sortedness is concerned, why is the empty list and the list with one element, why are those the trivial ones? Because there's no pairs. That, and what that means is that it's impossible for any pair to be out of order, because there aren't any. Okay, so now let's take this very big list and we'll break it into, into two smaller lists. Okay, remember this, is, I, you might feel that this is kind of trivial from a human point of view, but recall that we're trying to, the, the, the goal is to make it to where you can tell MATLAB how to do this. Okay, so we'll break this list into two lists. So, so now this list is broken into two lists, the list which contains five and the list which contains six. So two different lists here. So now let's consider this list. And then the, so what I'd like for you to observe is that, well, this list has one element in it. So it's sorted. Ah, finally, we found a piece of the problem that, that already was sorted. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> What an accomplishment. <laughs> and so I'd like for you to further observe that, that, that the same thing is true for the other one. GG, MATLAB, you're doing great, sweetie. Yeah, we're doing, <laughs> we're doing great. So now, here's, here's where the character of the problem becomes different. Okay, so now, now what's happened is you've got, you can think of it as having two folks, two people, and they've got their, each one of them has a bookshelf that they're working on. And they both say to each other, okay, I've, I've gotten my bookshelf into sorted order. And the other person says, hey, me too. I've got mine in sorted order. So now what, now what they need to do is say, okay, now let's combine the results. And let's combine, combine them in a sorted order as quickly as possible. Okay, so what's the, so given, given, given two folks, two people, and they each have a bookshelf, and 
each of their bookshelves is sorted, what's the fastest way to merge them into a single sorted bookshelf? Yeah, you could start, you could say each one at the beginning. And you say, okay, I'm going to call out my first book, and you call, call out your first book, and whichever one is the lesser, we'll, we'll put that one on the bookshelf first. Okay, and then as long as I have books, and as long as you have books, we'll just continue that. We'll continue doing that. Okay, so then the, the person number one says, okay, my first book is five. And person number two says, my first book is six. So, uh, whose book goes first? Five goes first. So that means that the first, the first uh, element in the list is five, because it was furthest to the left. Okay, then, uh, so five has been removed. So now the first person has an empty bookshelf, and the second per so the second person says, okay, then the rest of mine get, get tacked onto the end. So what's the next element in the list? Six. Okay. So now, coming back up here, these two have been merged into order, and the correct order is five and six. It's just a coincidence that they were in the right order to begin with. That's just a coincidence. <clears throat> so now this list is sorted. Okay. So now we're going to move over to this problem. So here's a list with three elements. Is that a trivial list? It's not a trivial list. <coughs> so we don't, we don't know how to sort it. So, but the only thing that we really do know how to do is break it into smaller subproblems. So let's break this into uh, two smaller problems. How are we going to break it into two smaller problems? Yeah, we'll break, we'll break this list into two halves as, as best as we're able. Uh, we can't break it into two, even, two, two lists of the same size because it's not an even number of elements. So we'll break it right here and say, OK, we're going to consider two, uh, two lists. <coughs> uh, one of the list is four, and the, uh, the list that contains just four, and the other one is the list that contains just three and one. OK. So now, let's consider this list. <laughs> is this list sorted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because it's a trivial list. Okay, and trivial lists are automatically sorted. So, this sublist was sorted, this sublist was sorted, these two were merged together to make that one. This sublist is sorted. Okay, so we don't do anything, but we're going to want to merge it with that one. Uh, but we can't we can't move on to the process of doing that because now we're going to put our attention here and ask, okay, here's a list that contains two elements. Is that a trivial list? It's not a trivial list. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. So the only thing we can do is break it into two smaller problems. So how are we going to break it? Down the middle. Down the middle. <coughs> So now that problem has been broken into two subproblems, three and one. <clears throat> okay, and what I'd like for you to observe about these problems is that consider the list that contains just three. Is it sorted? Yep. It is, trivially so. So this, this problem is finished, and this problem is finished. So it's like saying, <laughs> It's like you have two people, they each have a bookshelf, and they each have one book <laughs> on the shelf, and they say, my bookshelf is sorted. So is mine. So they, <laughs> they both have just one. So now we need to merge these two in the correct order. So each of these, each of these two starts calling out saying, <coughs> my first book is three. And this one says, oh, my, f my first book is one. So, so one being the smaller of the two uh, gets put first.
and then and then you run out of <coughs> this person runs out of books and then this one says oh, okay all of my books go next so one three okay so now I'd like for you to observe that now we're back at this problem which we split into two sub problems uh, and then we said okay the sorted version of this list is now four so now we have these two lists four and one three and now we need to merge these two so this one is kind of like a bookshelf that has just one book on it and this one is like a bookshelf that has just two books on it so they start calling out and this person says the person on the left says ah my first book is four and this person says what my first book is one so whose book gets put on the bookshelf first one gets put first Okay, so then now they call out again. This one says, my first book is four. And this one says, now my first book is three. And so then what gets put on the bookshelf? Three. Okay, then this one, this one says, my first book is four. And the other person says, oh, I don't have any books. So what happens? Four gets put on the shelf. Four gets put on the shelf. So now I'd like for you to observe that these two problems, these two individual subproblems have now been solved. This one is a sorted list, five, six, and this one is a sorted list, <coughs> one, three, four. So now it, it, the problem is like, we have two bookshelves, this person has two books on their shelf, this one has three books on their shelf, and they start calling out names. <coughs> So this one, <clears throat> this one calls out and says, ah, my first book is five. And this one says, my first book is one. So, what, so one gets put on the shelf. And now they, now they call out and this one says, my first book is five. And this one says, my first book is three. So three gets put on the shelf. And then this one says, uh, this one says, my first book is five, and this one says, my first book is four. So four gets put on the shelf. This one says, my first book is five, and this one says, I don't have any books. So what happens? Yeah, you just take all these books now in, in, the, in sorted order and just put them on the, on the shelf. So five and six. Okay, so now this list is now sorted. Very good. So then both people go look at, the <laughs> at this thing and says, oh, look at that pile of unsorted books over there. How many of them are there? There's five of them. Uh, we have no idea how to sort five books. So let's, let's break the problem into smaller problem. So what are we going to do? Break them in half, as, as nearly in half as possible. So we'll break them right here. So now we have two problems. We've got the list that contains 3 and 9, and the list that contains 8, uh, 2, and 7. OK, so now, is this a trivial list? No, it's not a trivial list. It's too big. <laughs> too big. So uh, we'll break this problem into smaller problems, how we're going to do it by dividing it in half. Okay, so now this problem can be broken in, is is broken into these two smaller problems, 3. And th that is to say the list that contains 3, <laughs> just 3 and also the list that contains just 9. And then this person, the person with the bookshelf on the left says, "Ah, my bookshelf is sorted now, <laughs> because there's just one on it, right? And then this person says, ah, oh, my bookshelf is sorted too. So then they decide, OK, well, now we need to combine our bookshelves into a single, uh, into a single sorted uh, list. So this person starts call, calls out the first item on their bookshelf. 
the first item on their bookshelf is three, and so this one says my first one is three, and this one says my first one is nine. So then three gets put on the bookshelf. Uh, this one says, oh, my, my bookshelf is empty now. And so all, the, all of the books on this shelf now get put on, on, the, on the sorted one. So now this is, this is sorted. So then now they say, OK, that's great. And they look over at this pile of unsorted books. And they say, oh, <laughs> that's a big pile of, of books. And I don't know how to sort that many books. So what are we going to do with this problem? <laughs> Break it into two small problems. So now I hope you're getting the sense that uh, <laughs> the small, the smallness, we're requiring things to be really small until we do something. Right? <laughs> so in particular, all the way down to the trivial list. And that you might think is not not the best thing we could do, and I would just have to agree. But I'll I'll address that in a minute. So now we've broken this big problem into two smaller problems. And then they look at this list and say, ah, that one's sorted. Good. So then they go look at this big pile <laughs> and say, oh, that's a, that's a really big pile of books. We're going to need to, <laughs> we're gonna need, need to break that into two smaller piles. So we'll break that into two smaller piles. Get two new bookshelves here. So now we have a that bookshelf and this bookshelf. And then the person on the left says, oh, my bookshelf is sorted. And the person on the right says, ah, me too because th they have a trivial, a trivial list, which is automatically sorted. So now they start calling out the sortedness uh, of their bookshelf. So this one says, ah, the first book on my shelf is two. And this one says, the first book on my shelf is seven. So what gets put on the merged bookshelf? Two gets put first, right? Mm -hmm. And then this person calls out, says, my list is empty. So what happens in response to this person's list being empty? All, all of the remaining books on this shelf now are put on the bookshelf. So, so it's conceivable that when you're doing this process for big lists, you could, be, you could be merging lists that originally had several hundred in the left list and several hundred in the right list. And it, it's conceivable that the left list could run out of elements while the right list has still 30 or 40 elements. So at that point, you just start putting them on, just blah, 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 down the line. No more comparisons are necessary. OK. So now, in a sense, these conceptual bookshelves are destroyed. And then here are the two people. And they say, ah, my bookshelf is sorted. And this, the person on the left says, my bookshelf is sorted. The person on the right says, oh, me too. So they start calling out names. So this one says, the first book on my shelf is eight. and the right person says, the first book on my bookshelf is two. So what gets put on the merged bookshelf? Two. <clears throat> OK. So then now, this person calls out again. OK, the first book on my bookshelf is eight, and the first book on my bookshelf is seven. So which one gets put, put on the merged list? Seven. The person on the left says, my first book is eight. And the person on the right says, I don't have any books. So what happens? All of these items get put on the bookshelf. Okay, so now we have that bookshelf is sorted. And so now, in a sense, conceptually, all of this work is destroyed or <laughs> ignored conceptually. And now you have two sorted bookshelves. This one is sorted. That one is sorted. So the person on the left said, they, they agree, ah, it's time to merge our results together. So the person on the left says, my first book is three. And the person on the right says, my first book is nine. Ah, uh, no, 
Two. <laughs> it's two. I don't, I'm not, not sure where nine came from. <laughs> I knew it was wrong as soon as I said it. That was kind of weird. So my first book is three. My first book is two. So what gets put on the, on the merging shelf? Two. Two. Okay. Uh, then this one says, okay, my first book is three. And the person on the right says, my first book is seven. So what gets put on the merging shelf? Three. three. Uh, so then now this person says, my first book is nine. And this one says, my first book is seven. So seven. This, the person on the left says, my first book is nine. The person on the right says, my first book is eight. So eight. The person on the left says, my first book is nine. And the person on the right says, I don't have any books. So everything that is left in this list is now put. So nine here. So now, conceptually, all of this work doesn't exist anymore, in a sense. Like, the, you know, these, these, these bookshelves have all been destroyed, and now we just have two bookshelves. This bookshelf is sorted. That bookshelf is sorted. So now we're going to merge these two bookshelves together. Okay, so now they just, now it's again calling out. So this one says on the left, my first book is one. On the right, my first book is two. So what gets put first? One. Three, two. Two. Three, three. They're the, they're the same. One. It, it doesn't matter. OK, but. How would you define which one? We will define that you'll always take the one on the left. Uh, the reason, the reason why, conceptually, this would be like, oh, we had two copies of War and Peace or whatever. Okay, so we had two copies of it, and we'll just assume that, oh, uh, well, maybe, maybe that order was significant, so we'll we'll keep that. So what I'm saying is that this three, as far as comparison, is the same as this three, but but this three was already to the left of that one, and we'll maintain that. So you could, you could call this like 3 sub 1 and this 3 sub 2. So what I'm saying is that we'll keep this one to the left. OK, so now we move past that one. And this one's, then we call out 4, 3. 3. three. 4, 7. Four. 4. 5, 7. Five. 6, 7. And then now this one calls out again with the bookshelf analogy. This one says, "I ran out of books." So what? Seven. Now all of the rest of the books are put on the shelf. Now, you might <laughs> you might look at this demonstration and say, uh, "That was really complicated." <laughs> <laughs> that was really complicated. Uh, and I I I don't dispute that. Uh, that, it, that it is, in a sense, uh, in, in some sense, complicated. But what I, what I do want to ask is that notice that I attempted anyway, for each pair of bookshelves, I tried to make all of these line up and these line up. Okay, that is to say, here we have, in a sense, the main bookshelf and the second layer of the problem, the third layer of, of the problem, the fourth and the fifth. So we had to kind of come down to fi five layers. I had to come down to five layers. Uh, my question to you is, is, is how many layers would we, would we ever have to go down to? So what I want you to see is that this was one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows. <coughs> Something like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Somehow log is always showing up. So let's yeah, go. Like <laughs> so the answer to the question is: we started out with ten, with ten items. And the question is: is that if you take if you take ten things, and you keep breaking them, breaking the that that group of size ten into groups that are each half the size, how far do you have to go? until you get to trivial lists. And, and how many elements are in the trivial lists? 
zero or one, right? So you take 10 and then you, you break that into groups uh, of evenly sized groups, so now you have five. Then you break those into evenly sized groups, and the biggest one would be three, the other one two. So you, then you take these three and you break them into groups of size uh, uh, of, of two, two equal groups, and the biggest one is then two. Okay, then you, you take this, these two, which are in uh, this not a trivial list, and you break them into, into smaller <coughs> problems, and now they each have size one. So what I want you to observe is that every time you go down, you're getting nearer and nearer to the trivial list each time. So how far down will you have to go? And the answer is, is right, is you'll have to go more or less logarithm base two of the number of elements. So even if I was asking you to sort four billion items, which, which is a lot, this this uh, tree, it's called a tree because you can kind of think of it like a root and then the branches are all, you know, growing like this. So this, it's called a tree, but usually it's written upside down like this. So this is like more like a root system, I guess. How tall, I even if I ask you to do this with four billion items, how tall would the tree need to be? About 32. Really, because sometimes you get a bigger one here and a bigger one there, it'd probably be about maybe like 40, okay, because, because just, like, just like on this, uh, this one was two, but this one was three. And then this one, uh, th then we went to here, this one was one, but this one was two. So it's, it's going to be quite nearly the logarithm base two. So that's how tall the tree is gonna be. Now consider, um, this, this problem, uh, Notice that we, we have to do this merger. And the merger occurs, <coughs> uh, for example, at this level. How many comparisons do we need to make? So here's 10 items, and then this is 5 and 5. So the comparisons, that is to say, I'm going to start calling out. So remember we called out and said 1, 2, and then we decided oh, it's 1. Then we called out 3, 2, and we decided Oh, it's two. So how many comparisons did we have to make? About seven or eight. Okay, a as it happened, because this, this bit was, as it happened, we, we had to make about seven. But at most, supposing that we never, neither list ever ran out, we wouldn't have to make more than 10 comparisons. Okay. As, it, as it happened, the left list was exhausted. So what I want you to see what I want you to see is that this tree has that property the whole way through. That uh, is that when we're down here, when we're down here and there's just five items, and, we're, and you can imagine that we're just solving that problem, then the logarithm base two of five, and then add one, is three. And that's how tall that tree is. And then we'd have to do exactly, well, we'd have to do at most five comparisons to figure out how to get these in order. All of these problems have that property. So as a result, uh, the, the complexity of this, the amount of operations that this take is if there are n elements, it takes uh, n, because that's how wide the tree is, multiplied by the logarithm base two of n, because that's how tall the tree is. So in, log in. Okay, now, let's reconsider, uh, say, this problem. <coughs> so what was the name of this one? <coughs> Bubble sort. Okay. So now the question is, is, how many comparisons does this take? Okay, let's consider. Uh, to make one staircase, how many, how many comparisons do we need to make? Three. Uh, there were three, and how many elements were there? Four. Four. What if there were ten elements? How many comparisons would we have to make? A lot. We'd have to make nine to make a full staircase, right? Because it's these two, then those two, then those two, then those two. So if there were, if there were ten elements, it'd be nine comparisons. It would have nine steps. If there were a million elements, <laughs> there'd be a million less one steps. Okay, then the question is, is... Uh, how many staircases would we need to make? 
in, in this example, we needed to make three staircases. We needed to make three staircases. Now let's consider, what's the, what's the worst possible scenario? For, for, this, for this exact sort, the worst possible scenario is that if the list was in exactly reverse order. That's the worst possible scenario. Because if it was in exactly reversed order, that would mean that the four would slowly walk its way down to the end. And then the rest of the list would be still in the exact wrong order. <laughs> and then the three would slowly walk to the end. And then, you know, it's called bubble sort because at any rate, it was, that's, that's how, the, how it was popularized because it's like the four is bubbling up to the top. And then the three bubbles up to the top, and then the two, and then the one. So what's the, what's the tallest this could possibly need to be? If, if we had n elements, what's the tallest it would have to be? Around n. OK, and how wide is this? n. It's n minus, it, it's n minus 1. That's how many of steps that are on the staircase, but I'll say about n. So this, this problem, to solve it in this way, takes approximately n squared steps, n times n. But this, to, to solve the problem in this way, takes approximately n times the logarithm of n. So let's consider n squared versus n multiplied by the logarithm base 2 of n. Uh, let's consider. What if n is, uh, say, 10? Then how big is this? 100. And if n is 10, how big is this? Well, the logarithm base 2 of 10 is, it's got to be more than 1. It's got to be more than 2. It's got to be more than 3, but less than 4. So between 3 and 4. So for 100, for, sorry, for 10, this is on the order of 100. And this one is on the order of 30. OK, how about for, uh, say, 1,000? What is this one? Million, right? Because <laughs> it's too early <laughs> for arithmetic. A million, uh, sorry, a thousand squared is a million. How big is this one? Less than it is less than, it is less than a million. So that would be a thousand, and then the question is, is about how big is the logarithm base two of a thousand, uh, uh, the logarithm base two of a thousand? It's about ten, because two to exponent ten is one zero two four. So that would mean that this would be approximately ten thousand, where this one would be a million. Okay, and to, to, it just gets worse the further out you go. Right, so if this one is on the order of a million, well, then a million squared, that's a lot. <laughs> right? I'm not even sure how big that is. Uh, whereas this would be on the order of uh, 2 million. 2 million? 39? It would be 1 million and then multiplied by 20. Yeah, so it would be on the order, yeah, 20, 30 million. Whereas this one would be a million millions. A lot. So what I'm telling you is that even though this seems sort of ob obscenely complicated, okay, as far as trying to draw it by hand, this is in fact a vastly superior way to, if, if you were ever set to the task of take all the books in the library and put them all in sorted order, <laughs> this is, this is uh, extremely fast in comparison to, say, bubble sort or insertion sort. So what's the name of this one? Quick this is not quick sort. That's sort. This is merge sort. Quick sort is when you separate the initial group up far, right? It's when you, like the first group. It's when you get a, uh, a number that you put before and after. So let's, uh, let's remove all doubt and let's just have a look at quick sort. <laughs> I've only seen a set talk about it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, but seeing a TED talk automatically makes you an expert, topic, as we all know. So, so let's take that same list. 
and what we what it was it was five six four three one uh, three again nine eight two seven <clears throat> Okay, so that's the, that's the list. So now we're going to solve this problem again with a tree, that is to say, breaking it into, recursively breaking it into subproblems. but the way we're going to do it is going to be a little bit different. So specifically what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to somehow try to pick an element that we hope is going to be in the middle-ish. Okay. Specifically, something that is close to the median. So if these were already sorted, like so, then, uh, then the median element, well, it'd be either, if we always say that we'll select the one on the left, then the median element would be 4. Okay, but we don't know that. We don't know that. Because if we, could, if we, if we always knew the median, then it would be <coughs> trivial to sort the list anyway. So what we want to do is we want to come up with some kind of way where we can uh, hopefully select something close to the median. One way to do it is just to, is just to say, well, just go over to that pile <laughs> of books and just grab one. And you say, well, uh, that, we're, we're going to select that to be, to be the one we're going to use as our comparison. But a slightly better way is to say, OK, uh, here's this very big bookshelf. Right, with millions of books on it. We'll look at the very first book. We'll look at the very last book. And we'll also look at the book that happens to be exactly in the middle of the shelf. And we'll, by exactly in the middle, I mean take all the positions, divide by two, and move to the left one position if you have to. So that means that uh, which one is in the middle? It'd be, it'd be this one. So now consider those three. We have, we have, uh, we, and we're going to make a three-way comparison. We have, we have uh, five, one, and seven. Now, which one of those, of five, one, and seven, is in the middle? Five is in the middle. Five is in the middle. Okay. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to take this five. So this one is the winner. Notice that that's not the true median of the list, but it's kind of close, isn't it? So we're going to take that 5, the winner, and write it right here. And then we're going to take all of the, and by right here, I mean in, in the, the median position here, uh, more or less. Now we're going to ignore the 5 and scan through all the rest of the list, and we're going to make two sublists. The list on the left is going to be everything that compares less than 5, and the list on the right is going to be everything more than 5. Okay? So, we're going to ask, 6, more or less, or equal? It's more. So we'll write it over here. 4, less. So we'll write it over here. 3, less. One, less. Three, less. Uh, I just did that one. Nine, more. Eight, more. <coughs> Two, less. Seven, more. So what I want you to observe is that that five is now in the correct position. But we've, in doing so, we have broken the problem into two subproblems. What do I mean by that? Yeah, this five is in the right place. This list is not sorted, but everything in this list is less than five. This list is not sorted, but everything in that list is more than five. Did you have a question? You just make some specific rule and say, we'll always put it on the left or always on the right. Because that'll probably happen right now. <laughs> and so now we're going to do exactly the same thing. So now, 
in a sense, you could say, okay, this was one big bookshelf, and now we have two bookshelves. We're going to ignore the one on the right. Okay, and we're going to do exactly the same procedure with this one. So what do I mean by that? Right. You consider the last, or the first one, the last one, and the one that happens to be in the middle, and you're going to make a three-way comparison and select the one that is in the middle. Uh, that is to say, the one, <laughs> the median of these three. Of, of these three. So uh, one, uh, sorry, four, one, and two. What is the median of four, one, and two? Two. two. So this is the winner. So that means that now we'll write two in the middle, and then we'll scan through the list, ignoring that two, and we'll write everything that's less than uh, two on the left and everything that's more than two on the right. So four, four. more, three, four. more, one, less, less. Uh, three, more. more. And then ignore the, ignore the, the two, because that, that, was, that was the one we selected. That was the winner. OK. So now, what I want you to observe is we took, we took this problem, and we broke it into two sub-problems. Now, sort of unhappily, you might say, we didn't, it didn't so happen that we broke it into two even, two equally sized sub-problems. But what I do want you to see is that we took this list of five elements, and now we have two problems, a list of one element and a list of three elements. I think we have a list of one element. Right, right. <laughs> so now we're going to look at this element and ask this, I, the implicit question that, I haven't, that I've been asking silently in my head, but now I'll say it out loud. Here's a list. We want to sort it. Is, it. is it already sorted? It is already sorted. Because why? Because <coughs> it's a trivial list. It's already sorted. So check mark on that one. Two, we don't need to consider that because it's already in the correct position, so now we'll do this one. <laughs> is, this a, is this a trivial list? No, no it's a big list. <laughs> right, it's really big. So what we're going to do is make, again, a three-way comparison. <laughs> we'll choose the first element and the last element and the one that's in the middle. <laughs> and of these three choices, uh, which one is the median? Three, Three is the median. Uh, so since this one is further to the left, I'll choose it to be the median element. So this one is now fixed. Uh, and I'll say, okay, now everything that's less or equal, to make the, to make the rule clear. Yes? I have a class in 10 minutes. Oh, are we out of time? Oh, we are. I didn't, I didn't realize. Okay, so that's all. Uh, for today. Sorry, I, I didn't realize.